Hi, it's Michelle, and I'm doing a video here about the unboxing and setup of my new drop cam. So, here's what's in the box. The camera, the little thing you attach to the wall, I guess a wall mount, and then here is the power cord. It's a USB, mini USB cord. It connects to your computer to set it up, and then it connects to that, it connects to the AC. So hypothetical, you could plug it into like a USB battery pack if you didn't want to connect it to an electrical outlet. Showing you that it's not all that intuitive. This little B is facing upwards and it really doesn't even look like it's plugged in all the way. There you go. See, you can see some of the metal there. And the other side says drop cam, I think, on it. And you would think that that would go upwards towards the other drop cam but I don't think it does because my camera's working now. But just real, be really careful about that and that's the way mine inserted into there. Okay, so now I've plugged it into my computer and it's supposed to just launch right into it but mine didn't. So what I had to do was go to the start menu, go to computer and then I was able to see this drop cam and I clicked on that. So I click on setup drop cam this brings me to an option for Mac or Windows. I'm on a Windows 7 computer. So I'm going to click on Setup Drop Cam Windows, which will then launch what was supposed to launch automatically. And it didn't launch this way with either the first one I tried to install or this one. So this is what you should have seen when you first plugged your Drop Cam into your computer. I don't need to create a username and password because I've done it once already. So if my computer's remembering that and I'm logging in and now it's looking for Wi-Fi networks. It's going to show my neighbors and mine and here I'm entering the password for the Wi-Fi network. Hopefully you remember that. Hopefully you have a Wi-Fi. You better have a Wi-Fi password. <laughs> if not, I wouldn't be connecting this if I were you. Connect to Wi-Fi. Now it really does take just this long. I'm not cutting out any video here because I want you to see how long it really takes. Okay, so it's connected to the Wi-Fi and on the next screen it's going to tell you to where some information about where to set the camera. So click that little box and click next. Really is the setup really is this fast. I cut out about two minutes in the section where it tells you to disconnect from your computer and plug it into the wall and put it put the camera where you want it um, because I don't think you want to just get stare at the screen for two minutes. So I've taken my camera to the window facing my front door and set it set it up um, inside the house but facing outside so I can see out the front door and towards the street and then I come back to my computer and click next and then you're going to name your camera this is mine is facing the front entry so um, I'm going to name it entry and click watch now I may actually set this up outside as a front door intercom because my front porch is covered, but I'm not going to do that right now. So here is my front entry, and there is the Amazon box, and this is the kind of thing that I actually got the camera for, so I can watch who's coming to my door, I can see when UPS comes. Uh, here's You're going to click on the settings up here to bring up settings for this camera. It's called entry because that's what I named it. I want the status lights off because I don't want a yellow light calling attention to the camera. The night vision works really good, but I don't want it in this camera right now. It shines some red lights. I want the audio off because it's indoors facing outdoors, so I don't want to pick up all the audio from inside my house. And um, I want to detect motion events, which will send me an alert when somebody's coming to the front door or snatches a box off of my front doorstep. I don't want this the sound. So when you click this close button up here, that is the same as clicking save and now it's going to apply those settings that I just set. So now I want to go back into my settings and set up what kind of alerts I want to get. I've already told it about what I want to detect and that has to do what it's going to, how it's going to save your history. How it's going to put like markings in the history to call your attention to certain things. But now I want to set alerts, and that's when I'm going to get a message to either my iPad, phone, or an email telling me if it's been unplugged, if the electricity to it's gone out, if it's detected motion, if it's detected sound. 
you may want to turn off motion alerts if you if your camera's facing the street and you don't want to get an alert every time a car drives by your house. You can also use the sharing screen to send a message to somebody else that you want to be able to view the camera. Now this is really important. Do not check this. Do not make your camera public unless you want the whole world to be able to watch what your camera is picking up. If you have a puppy cam or it could be like a pretty neat little live streaming thing to embed in your website that would be a pretty neat use for this camera but if you're using it for home security you definitely do not want to make that public. Now this is just going back I only have five minutes of history here since it's only been plugged in for five minutes but I'm just showing you what some of your viewing options are to go back in history. You can go back 30 seconds or you can go back in this timeline. Live streaming is free and you have 14 days to try out the cloud services where it's going to save seven days of history. You can also save up to 30 days of history if you're willing to pay a little more. But you don't have to do this. It's not saving it to your hard drive, it's saving it to a drive in the cloud or live streaming. So those are your options there. These all, all of this looks different on an iPad, an iPhone, or your computer. I really like the way it looks on the iPad. So I would give this product a thumbs up for ease of setup. It's quick, it's very easy, and it's a great product. For $149, I think it's a keeper. If, thanks for watching.